We'll just wait for a minute or so. Uh, sure, sir. Yeah. We are just seeing some participants are still joining in. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I still see a few people joining, but what I would do is, meanwhile, I'll just start with overview the our actual uh, by the time presentation starts maybe most of the participants would have joined so first of all uh, welcome to this very industry focused uh, webinar and uh, uh, so first i like to thank uh, consulting engineers association to providing us this opportunity to partner with them and come up with this webinar. And today we are running a four set of one hour each discussion. This, the first one is on high, roads and highways. And today our uh, 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 overall, the, in this uh, one hour, next one hour, our agenda is going to be first welcome note by Dr. Ajay Pradhan, who is president of CAI. And then uh, Mr. S.S. Khandelwad, uh, Associate Director, who would be presenting the industry overview from roads and highway perspective. And then we will have a presentation by Mr. Vivek Ramesh, who is a Senior techno uh, Technology Solution part uh, Specialist from Autodesk. So, uh, so I'll just like to first welcome Dr. Ajay Pradhan, and I'm sure uh, most of you would have already met him or heard about him. He is a master's and doctorate in water resource engineering and management. And he's got a three decades of experience in planning and designing and implementing number of large infrastructure project. And he's currently the president and CEO of C2S2 Consulting Engineers. So without uh, talking too much <laughs> about uh, his other profile, I'd like to hand over to Mr. Ajay Pradha. Th th thank you, Chakrasji. Thank you. Good morning, friends, colleagues, and participants. Welcome to this webinar series. I'm really happy to, you know, have uh, Caprica Technologies and my dear friend Chakrasji Jain, uh, who is the chairman of the company and also in partnership with Autodesk India. I think this is an excellent opportunity for our consulting fraternity professionals would like to see the new technology and actually see this digital transformation happening in India. That's very important. So let me just give you briefly what is CAI. CAI is the Consulting Engineers Association of India, is the apex body of consulting engineers in India. It represents the Indian consulting and consultancy professionals at the International Federation of Consulting Engineers, which you otherwise known as a FIDIC, which is the FIDIC contract and all. So CI is the voice of all consultants and consulting engineering companies. And it has a 60 years of uh, accumulated knowledge and experience. So it has a number of members. It has contracting members, contractor companies, consulting companies, and individual companies as well. I think this, uh, this initiative, I'm really again thankful to the Caprica Technologies Sakraji for kindly agreeing to partners and you know share the new technologies, especially the BIM. Uh, building information modeling 
in the civil engineering because most of our uh, uh, engineering if you look at in india what we do in our membership almost 60% 50 60% dealing with the civil engineering so this is very important uh, we have seen uh, actually how 1d 2d now this is really digital transformation and an intelligent system that we need to really look at how flexibility how it can help on the you know 4d like time or money sustainability and in also including the operation and management in assets you know so those are the things which you can see and be it's, it's actually revolutionize the engineering sector it's not only that it i believe that this also helps in understanding and delivering the projects from contractors or designer point of view from contractor perspective from client it makes a very transparent system so therefore i would see that this technology is going to go in a long way i'm just wanted to mention you that in fidic in at international level at geneva we have been discussing that uh, as many countries you know that already made a mandate that uh, all the design engineers have to deliver their work in beam for example singapore denmark and england uh, britain they have already given so we need to come out quickly we have already done a lot of work on the fidic uh, contractual aspects for contract management and various other aspects so therefore i think this is uh, going to help our fraternity all members uh, to understand how it can help and uh, in a better way and implement the only thing that i would request autodesk and uh, uh, caprica technologies to see that how best you can help the, our fraternity and companies especially small consulting engineers to adapt to this new system with this i thank you all uh, chakra ji for uh, uh, partnering with us and delivering this uh, four uh, sex uh, like highways bridges and we are going to have on the water waste water on the rails and then the oh, last one would be on the energy and specially focus on solar energy i think with this i would i would uh, say again thank you and welcome so ajay uh, <laughs> dear friend it's all our pleasure and we in fact like to thank you for giving us this opportunity to present autodesk technology to all our fraternity so we are all uh, vivek and myself are actually part of the fraternity uh, so we are from the same profession although we have now kind of supporting the profession rather than practicing ourselves so thank you very much so uh, uh, next i like to uh, invite uh, uh, Mr. Khandelwal, who is uh, Associate Director in Consulting Engineer CEG Group, and I'm sure everyone is aware about the fantastic work which CEG Group has been doing in this sector. To, from his own uh, experience, share some of the wisdom and how uh, uh, all the all of us can benefit from the latest trends in the technology. So, with that, I like to hand over to Mr. Khandelwal. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, as we are aware of uh, in the uh, BIM, uh, all the stakeholders, maybe planning, design, architecture, people who are conceiving the project, who are doing the detailed design, as well as who are in the construction site and also the client. Uh, also from client side, the independent engineer or authority engineer, everybody interact on the virtual platform so that the visualization of the asset uh, roads and highways can be done in a better manner. And uh, if any uh, improvements are required, anybody can interact, uh, give their suggestions and client can manage uh, all the uh, activities uh, of the project in a virtual manner, uh, not only during design and construction, but operation also because you have got everything on the virtual uh, platform uh, in time to come. Uh, the uh, we can see the tra uh, traffic operations where are uh, various uh, uh, issues coming up during the operation phase uh, maybe uh, some capacity problems maybe some uh, crash uh, issues road safety issues can also be visualized in time to come right now it may not be there and uh, first of such a large uh, application is being done in the mumbai nagpur expressway and uh, uh, a client MSRDC is uh, quite proactive in uh, involving all the stakeholders with the BIM and it was uh, made essential in the bid documents to uh, by the uh, contractors, by the uh, authority engineer and uh, various stakeholders that they will have the experts uh, on board in the team so that uh, everybody can use uh, the 
uh, way a project will look like in virtual space. So it can be in 2D, 3D, or even 4D, uh, so that uh, every aspect can be uh, visualized. And uh, most important thing is that uh, all aspects uh, can happen in a time frame earlier. Uh, there were different silos, like design people working in different uh, uh, sector, different world. The people who are managing the project on uh, CPM part, they were working in a different manner. Uh, the client uh, and their account people or cash flow people were managing in a different way but integrated efforts are not happening. And that is why uh, physical meetings used to happen uh, with every kind of stakeholders. So different kind of stakeholders become uh, on one platform and depending upon their level of interaction required, the uh, accessibility is defined by the vendor. So that uh, uh, everybody need not go into the each and every part of the project. Uh, but uh, whatever is their role, whatever is their capability, whatever is their uh, requirement by the client. Uh, so it, accessibility to the different part of the software, different part of the uh, BIM can be assigned and passwords will be accordingly assigned. So uh, not only the, further the, in the emergency situations, uh, since you have got whole thing on virtual platform, uh, you can better manage uh, the disaster or uh, any emergency situation uh, with the project. And uh, top level can visualize where and what has happened, what kind of incident has happened, and they can guide to different kind of people to manage the incident in a better manner. So with all these things, uh, I uh, feel that uh, further micro level technical details will be deliberated in this webinar and uh, BIM will definitely break down silos and uh, key uh, element to pursue a better way of doing things uh, for our clients across their entire business uh, will happen. And uh, uh, the case study of Nakhon Mumbai Expressway and similar other projects will definitely uh, create a coordinated uh, different discipline people on a same platform and extract information needed for facilities for managing the project in a better manner. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Khandelwal, for setting up the problem for us, statement for us. And that's exactly is the theme of our topic today, uh, of the uh, event today's Connected BIM. So how can all of us collaborate together and work, as, as you said, we have to break down these silos of information and make that entire information available to all of us and how the overall design and the experience of the design and finally how the better outcome comes. So thank you very much for uh, highlighting, sharing some of the issues and what we need to do. And that's exactly what we are looking at presenting today. Thank you, sir. So I'll continue. Uh, so before I continue, uh, I'll just like to, uh, Vivek, is my screen visible? Yeah, okay, thank you. So uh, so before I continue, I'll just like to highlight uh, some of the uh, webinars uh, uh, functioning. So we have a Q&A box. Uh, please, if you have any questions from the participant side, please feel free to write your questions and answers in the Q&A box and we'll try and answer right on the spot or at the end of the session, we will take up those questions and we'll try and answer. So, so, so I'll just, we will, before I hand over to Mr. Vivek, I'll just like to highlight as Capricorn, we have been into this business and helping all the engineers like yourself for more than three decades now. And with all that effort, we are serving more than 20,000 customers across the country. And uh, we are Autodesk Platinum partner and we are present across the country. So with that, I like to now invite Mr. Vivek Ramesh. Mr. Vivek is senior technical specialist especially for civil infrastructure based out of Bangalore uh, with Autodesk. And he has got more than 16 years of professional experience in this. So without uh, speaking much, I'll just like to hand over to Mr. Vivek for his uh, presentation. Thank you, Chakrishi, and thank you, Kandilwanji, for setting the context right. Um, so let me share my screen. 
I hope you're able to see my screen now. Yes, please. Yeah, yes, and please. for the sake of bandwidth, I'll probably keep uh, my video off. Okay. So uh, good morning, everyone. And thank I thank each and every one of you for having made time today uh, for today's uh, webinar on connected BIM for roads and highways. I'm Vivek Ramesh, uh, a senior technical specialist uh, with Autodesk who handles civil infrastructure. So as uh, in today's topics, we, uh, we will cover the overview of the infrastructure space itself. What are the challenges? What kind of projects we can expect? What is the quantum of projects you can expect in the infrastructure space? And there will be uh, a you know, process-wise breakup of roads and highways design in, in a connected uh, workflow basis. Survey, planning and concept design, detailed design. Then we'll move to virtual design and construction. And then the most important piece of connecting the BIM together, collaboration and coordination. And of course, we'll also see some customer testimonials as well. So I hope all of you are aware of uh, who Autodesk is. Autodesk is uh, a company that uh, helps you know, designers, engineers, architects make whatever they need to. Whether it's automotive space, whether it's architectural space, whether it's a civil engineering space, or for that matter, media and entertainment space, we have solutions for each and every industry vertical. Right? So coming to the infrastructure space itself in today's state, all of you know that infrastructure is extremely costly to conceive and develop, right? And also maintain. And uh, given the nature of urbanization in today's date, if we are getting extremely complex projects to meet this demand, right? And also at the same time, what about the uh, infrastructure that was previously built? It is aging faster than we think it is, right? And we need to have a solution to quickly churn out designs to manage the kind of demands coming in from the urbanization. So a little on about the industry itself, um, according to a survey, it is noted that compared to all other industries, uh, non-farm business labor productivity industries, and uh, compare that to a construction labor productivity, there is a drop of about 153% over 50 years, that means, construction uh, productivity has remained neutral or in fact is reducing owing to various reasons. So we'll see how that, uh, why that is the case, right? This is because construction is investing or a civil infrastructure industry is investing a lot less on technology than other industries in the same space. So for example, manufacturing industry is investing about 3.3%, whereas we are only at about 1.2%. So given the five-year construction output forecast, uh, it is noted that uh, you know, rail roads and airports will take the main stage and uh, our 50% out of that with, or the lion's share will belong to that of roads and highways, which is about $5.2 trillion worth of projects which will be coming our way. And this creates an excessive demand in the way uh, you know, a project needs to be conceived, project needs to be, uh, projects need to be constructed and so on and so forth. So we need to step it up. And uh, in, uh, um, relying on or moving to digital uh, construction methodologies or design methodologies or entirely digitizing your work process for the design and construction is estimated to, uh, to save about $1.2 trillion uh, worth of uh, you know, money uh, for the contractors and designers, I mean, owners alike. So what is the buzzword here? Of course, I'm sure most of the participants on this uh, call have used BIM in one way or the other. I don't want to re-emphasize that, but of course, it is a, uh, what is BIM for us from an infrastructure standpoint? It is a 3D model-based design which provides better design efficiency, right? So that's the one, I mean, 3D forms the crux of BIM. So let's understand that. And while we come to the topic of connected BIM, right, for infrastructure, what is, what is it about? Connected, uh, if they, you can see three different stages of uh, any infrastructure life cycle, uh, design, build, and operate, it needs to happen on a central model. Every stage of the, uh, the you know, design phase 
has to use the same design model from the word go, right? Uh, and that means at the design stage, if a design model is used, it needs to be used for the, the same model needs to be leveraged for the construction. And also during the operate stage, the same exact same model needs to be leveraged for operation and maintenance. So if this doesn't happen, if we don't enrich the model throughout the life cycle of the design project, I mean design life, life cycle, it is not considered to be connected BIM. Okay. So we need to have a central model. And also there are various other things, advancements in the industries that we as uh, roads and highway design consultants and owner, owners or contractors need to know about. And I'm sure many of you are aware of some of the latest offerings in the industry, such as high definition surveying, LIDAR. I'm sure most of the projects are now, I mean, everybody knows about LIDAR survey or you know photogrammetry. And uh, there are also machine learning applications to uh, accelerate designs. I'll show you a glimpse of what that is about. And uh, industrialization of construction, you know, there is a convergence of the uh, AC industry and the manufacturing industry for quicker you know, construction. And of course, digital collaboration. What we saw this piece as the biggest piece of worry in the construction sector, wherein, like Kandelwal sir said, everybody's working in silos, more so the con contractors, because they are relying on hard copies on site. They are not digitizing, or leveraging the digitized data, digital data, right? And um, the internet of things and advanced analytics, like he said, we also need to use the same model for operations and maintenance. We need to leverage or base, uh, set the platform the, uh, of the 3D model to be able to be used for uh, operations and maintenance. So what's in it for op owners, operators, uh, owners, operators, designers, engineers, and uh, contractors alike. So we had did a small survey and uh, we found out that these are, were the major benefits out of you know, moving to a completely BIM oriented workflow. So the, um, most of them felt that there were fewer errors, 33% felt that, and uh, greater cost predictability, which is great for everybody in the project lifecycle, all the stakeholders. Better understanding of the project, yes, for quicker, um, you know, uh, Conceiving of, the, uh, conceiving of the project and also construction and an improved schedule, which is great, uh, which is good again. So all of these were some of the benefits that people saw in the construction um, AEC sector, especially for infrastructure. So what were the business challenges when it comes to, you know, let us talk about a little, a little on the design and engineering or consulting space and the contractor space. What were the business challenges? You know, some of the challenges were winning and retaining work. Uh, you know, uh, obviously that is uh, number one on the chart. And expanding billable service. Are you limited to whatever is given to you? As is it only design? Are you not spanning out into operation and maintenance? Can you bill your client for that? Right? Things like this. And also increasing project complexity is you know, leading uh, people to rely more and more on technology. So project complexity is increasing, so thereby the design time and of course, uh, the, the reliance on various other sort of design software. And of course, hiring and retention of talent. If you were to ask, uh, you know, new talent that, that is coming into your firm, whether it's the owner operator, design uh, consultancies or contractors, they would want to work on state of the art technology. So this, will, this is one of the challenges. So in relation to that, let us see what the benefits uh, BIM could offer to you, right? There is, you, you always have this competitive advantage over your competitors if you use a multitude of products and also rely on a BIM-based workflow, right? Uh, so that definitely is a plus. And increased profitability, as you saw in the earlier slide, you saw that cost predictability was good, you know, uh, uh, timelines and schedules could be met, thereby increasing the uh, profitability of for an organization. And a lot less business risk, right, on site, on, you know, say, for example, at your office, there are a lot less business risk when it comes to change management and so on. And of course, hiring and retention, as you are looking at the latest and greatest in technologies for uh, roads and highways design, your uh, you will be, your uh, staff will be content in terms of the usage of technology itself. So I believe most of you agree with me when you when I say if 
it's an infrastructure model if it's a roadway model there uh, it is a combination of various disciplines it is not if it's a road model it's just not a road model it has a lot of things such as survey data geospatial data is coming in civil designs are coming in you need to assess the utilities that are crossing uh, your uh, roadway model there are structural elements such as bridges culverts tunnels and so on there are also reality capture element aspects that you need to see for retrofitments especially in the urban scape and also there's you know uh, this automated uh, machine guiding this 5d project scheduling a lot of things right even the visualizations of projects that you see for infrastructure are all based on 3d models right so all of this is combined to form a single infrastructure model right so going to the first very first stage of design what have we to offer right what does autodesk have to offer in terms of technology so when it if i were to split the process of design uh, and uh, i mean roads and highways into four different stages it would be survey planning and concept design detailed design and virtual design and construction not even take into consideration uh, the aspect of collaboration at this moment i'll expand on it later so obviously converting high precision surveys to detailed topographic data yes you i talked about lidar data or photogrammetric data you can get those things into civil 3d this was the typical way in which um, you know people used to bring in survey data right so for th those of you who are still on autocad to, uh, and rely on autocad to bring in uh, you know survey data from total station the civil 3d definitely will be a blessing because it accelerates several process, you know several uh, steps in your uh, survey data import all right so while this was a conventional survey there are also other you know means by which you can import survey data so in this case say for example you are doing a preliminary engineering survey and you just have a drone with you rather than relying on surveyors entirely to uh, for several days to capture the information on the site you can just fly a drone over that take some high definition photograph and stitch it like a panoramic image 3d panoramic image and bring it into interfaces such as introverse so this gives a great deal of accuracy this gives a great deal of flexibility to the designers uh, and the engineer surveyors alike right so if you are doing preliminary level studies definitely this is the way to go right uh, rely on photogrammetry convert that into mesh models and use it in your design i'm sure this will give you a, a greater cross predictability in while you're bidding for project uh, so while we talk about photogrammetry what is more accurate than photogrammetry i believe would be you know mobile lidar capture right so uh, how are we capturing again you fly drones or a mobile uh, aerial devices to capture lidar information and you have interfaces such as uh, introvert which can bring in uh, lidar information and there's a whole lot deal that you can do kanilwar sir said about predicting traffic for a particular city model right you can do that okay with the kind of surface that you're generating or the models that are generating and what's more important is from an existing condition standpoint you can capture a lot of features uh, such as feature lines brake lines uh, from the model right from the mobile lidar data capture as well so this gives more accuracy to the designers um, that, that take this data into their uh, you know detailed design process right so this is one other aspect and coming to the next step which is conceptual design we talked about survey in terms of typical dgps or you know total station surveys uh, photogrammetry and lidar data how it can be utilized now let us come into the next phase which is the uh, conceptual uh, design stage right so what do you do in the conceptual stage and wh while i was uh, uh, working for an uh, a design firm before autodesk we used to you know crave for a concept modeling tool such as introvert to be able to generate options design alternatives engine uh, engineering options right and also we were not able to connect the piece of like uh, as sir said various pieces like you know bridges roads are we looking at traffic uh, capacity building for that particular road 
uh, all of this couldn't have happened on a single model okay and also clients always believe in conceptualizing the project rather than looking at just 2d depictions of your design idea right so so um, to this process of course we welcome i mean introvert has been a really really popular tool for uh, over the last uh, few years and probably this is the easiest and probably the most intuitive of tools when it comes to uh, high roads and highways design it considers a lot of objects the first and the foremost you can bring in you know your study area onto your desktop and start churning out or sketching out literally your design right if you if you had i mean if your project if you're a project manager if you're uh, you know heading a particular infrastructure consultancy sketch out the design ideas and give it to designers who can you know translate your design ideas into actual detailed design so this can happen using introverts right and uh, coming to roadway design alone as i told you i always crave for a conceptual design model which was constructible which was practical now taking into consideration the existing uh, conditions whether it's terrain whether it's the you know aerial imagery or whether it is gis data that underlies the particular um, project area it is very important to see how your design ideas fit into the existing uh, environment that is more key and just by looking at this clients can assess whether a project is viable or not you don't even need to rely on any 3d models and also the best part about having a design um, tools like introvert is it is an intelligent model it gives it gives you volumes whether it is for roads whether it is for utilities whether it is for uh, structures it gives you the volumes so that you can know uh, like the, uh, the kind of cost that will be incurred due to for that particular option right so and what's more everybody in today's date wants to see the animation or a uh, actual 3d model of the project even before it is built because a lot is, is at stake for them right you can rely on uh, introverts for this for uh, optimizing your design at the initial stages and then pushing into detailed design and just tweaking the designs a little bit here and there so that itself saves a lot of time most of the people believe that you know convincing a customer on design alternatives is the toughest part and design changes when it comes from clients to and fro it takes away a lot of time i've heard people saying that they've lost about 15 to 20% of their project time only to design revisions which which is not paid for in the india scenario right so we don't account for design changes uh, or we don't bill it so uh, introvert use lock on to the design alternatives that has been suggested by the client and then go ahead with the design this will in turn increase your profitability in the way you work on project right um so that is one aspect of it and uh, of course there's another thing called uh, uh, on the on the model you can develop a lot of analysis whether it's hydraulic whether it's traffic whether it's multi modal simulations all of this can be done to assess the viability of your road project right and the ease of which you can develop preliminary designs and outputs for your uh, you know can be really quick it's almost instantaneous coming to the next aspect that is drainage design i'm sure uh, all of you on this call are you know uh, have faced this issue of you know having the least number of structures along a particular highway because structures increase the cost so uh, obviously if you want to see a design alternative it is also key to note how many cd structures you will require along the infrastructure project road and highway project that you are working on how many culverts do you need how many bridges do you need right how many tunnels do you need all of this needs to be assessed and whatever the software could give you the locations in which everywhere you need a cd structure right the software itself will give you uh, like introverts will identify the outfall areas across your corridors and it will allow you to develop um, you know uh, surface uh, drainage designs on the go as well right whether it's box culverts you know pipe culverts whether it's bridges it will allow you to assess the um, you know viability of that particular cd structure and one other thing that i may not show here is for bridges there is something called as 
uh, flood simulation. You can see the proliferation of water along the linear waterway, and you can see whether your bridge design is sufficient or not. The length of the bridge or the height of the bridge is sufficient or not uh, in terms of the water that is flowing through a water channel, right? So that is one good thing. And the second thing is, uh, and the next thing is bridge design. So as I told you earlier, we always struggled. I mean, when I was working with a design consultant, as Kandil Walser said, we were working in silos. I, I ex completely accept that. Bridge engineers and highway engineers never used to interact on a regular basis, and our designs would never reach to them in time, right? We never had a common platform to share data. So our design ideas or design thoughts would never come across to a bridge engineers. And so in this case, say for example, a highway engineer develops a road alignment in a particular way, a bridge engineer can come in and develop a concept level model of a bridge instantaneously, whether he can also fine tune the designs using the, in, and say InfraWorks also gives you an option of working out of spreadsheets. Your design can be translated into spreadsheets and you can edit the values to see the changes. And anything in the bridge design, whether it's bridges, girders, piers, or pier caps, everything can be customized at the concept level design itself. What more do you need? I mean, if your design is more or less ready uh, in terms of design, right at the you know conceptual stage, I think during the design stage, you can accelerate things and fine tune things to better suit your uh, design requirements. And also for uh, you know civil engineers or highway engineers, it was a challenge to bring in structural elements onto um, the uh, plan profile or plan production drawings, whether it's the 3D model itself, whether it's plan view, profile view, or cross-sectional view, it was very difficult to, <coughs> excuse me, it was very difficult to bring in the structure. Now, it is instantaneous. You can just, uh, you know, plonk the design, your structural design inside of uh, Civil 3D from InfraWorks. Right? Now, what would be the next stage in design. Now, that would be preliminary and detailed design stage. What do we expect to do in the detailed design stage is, you know, basically, as I told you earlier, for BIM, 3D modeling would be at the heart of your BIM process, right? So if you used dynamic software, like it understands the changes you make in the, in the entire process, and it adjusts to the changes that you've made. For example, I'm quoting civil 3D. If you change the alignment, the profile changes. If you change the alignment and profile, the corridor changes accordingly. Things like that, you, there's a lot of things that can be offered in connected design workflows, right? So civil 3D is an entirely BIM uh, platform for a fully uh, developed BIM platform for roads and highways, and also a very well interconnected BIM tool, okay? And uh, also, not only the design, you will also have to take care of various uh, aspects of design validation as well that can be done within Civil 3D. So, as I said, Civil 3D is a completely model based design. Whether you're bringing your designs from Infraverse or starting off your designs from within uh, Civil 3D, you have the flexibility to bring in each and every aspect of design inside the design model, whether it is land use pattern GIS, whether it is existing utilities that are there around your project, all of this can be brought in, including the aerial map, to better fine tune a project to suit that context, right? And as it is a model-based design, everything that you develop is actually getting developed in 3D. The volumes are getting uh, uh, changed, the, align, uh, the model itself is getting changed according to whatever design changes you tweak in, inside the model. And once you've developed the design model itself, as I was talking about connected design, right? When we talk about connected design, what do I do with this 3D model? So there are many other aspects that people consider in today's date. Based on the uh, you know, uh, 3D model itself, I can develop several automated tasks using tools like Dynamo. As you saw in the earlier uh, video there, let me play it again towards the end. You see, uh, it you know you can automate the creation of various city furniture such as railings, uh, signposts, uh, gantries, la lampposts, and all of this 
can be automated and can be placed on the BIM model in one single click. So this is also possible using, uh, when you are developing connected models, a BIM-based workflow model, right? And uh, there's also a lot of enhancements that we see in Autodesk today when it comes to infrastructure design. Now, uh, I specifically talk on the connected alignment uh, feature of Civil 3D, in which now in this case, many people find it uh, laborious to develop uh, alignments and profiles uh, for uh, interchange models, right? So in interchange models, you have the capability, you have an option of connected design between two alignments. You can develop spirals, circular curves, or combination of both uh, to develop ramps, exit entry ramps, or for that matter, uh, this actual uh, takeoff ramps as well. Uh, this is a classic example of a clover leaf. As you can see, it takes two uh, you know alignments into consideration. It also matches, why we call it as connected alignments is, it also matches the profiles. Uh, you know, alignment one and alignment two, it matches the vertical geometry as well. So what better can it be? Your design is already half saved when you are matching alignments and profiles, right? So this is a very quick way to um, develop your design. And obviously the rest of the things would be to fine tune your corridors with respect to the cross section that you develop for uh, this kind of design. So why I emphasize on this is connected workflows, whether it is between the software or within the software, everything is interconnected. You change the alignment, the profile changes accordingly. You change any one part of the alignment, the, the, the loops get rearranged automatically. All of this can happen. So, I mean, I talked, if you remember, I talked a little bit on um, you know, machine learning, right? Now, with the advent of Civil 3D 2022, you have the option of optimization of design. Now, for those of you who are working on smart city projects and uh, you are working on large areas that need to be developed, internal loads, external loads, you can fine tune the, the land grading part of it. Now, this is a classic case of plot development, right? So leave it to the software. Imagine this kind of plot development or grading would take me any day in excess of two days. So imagine the software generating the design options based on the parameters that you're giving and developing the plots and the internal roads to, to optimize the design, right? And it gives you an optimized output. And you can also see various design outputs that the software gives. This also is true for classic cases like, you know, bridge abutment, uh, you know, grading. So during the bridge abutment, you need a certain fill for uh, the, uh, the abutment area. You just select a boundary around the abutment areas and have the software evaluate what is the best suited grading pattern for that particular uh, you know, grading area. And this, will, this can be optimized for landfill. I'm sure landfill is a lot less calculated than it is in today's date. Now, with Civil 3D, you can definitely achieve all of this using machine learning. Now, Civil 3D also has machine learning inbuilt, which is called, uh, you know, grading optimization too, okay? So uh, as I told you about connected design, right? Okay, how do I relate to connected design now? Documentation is one of the most important aspects when it comes to connected design. So if you have developed the model, why, you know, uh, why leave the owners on the draft persons to develop your cross-section plan profiles and all? What if the tool itself could de develop plan plans, profiles, and cross-sections automatically based on the template that you, you want? So Civil 3D, this was one of the greatest strengths of Civil 3D years ago. This was one of the first features that was developed and still is getting fine-tuned every now and then, every year, to suit the needs of our customers. Right, so this is also a very good aspect in terms of connected design. So when it comes to a bridge design, right, we saw a simple swipe that created a bridge, but there is a lot more to bridge design in the design stage. Whether you bring your Infraworks models into Revit, it's one click, it moves into Revit. If you change your design inside of Infraworks here, it notifies. Like you, if you remember Kandilwasar saying, 
there's not notifying people if they work in silos they don't know what changes are happening so if any change happens on one model i mean one software immediately when you open the other software who uh, or the person who's working on design detailing of that particular structure the notification goes to him right within the software saying that this bridge design has been changed do you want to update or not yes he wants to update and it instantly happens out of this you can based on these changes you can make uh, changes on your gads your section views your profile views and so on and similar thing happens in civil cd as well if you de- design infra uh, i mean uh, just using infra work and you change the design in infra work if any change has happened it pops up a window saying that the design has been changed do you want to update the model this is a great deal for you know uh, engineers uh, alike right so bridge uh, for bridge design we consider infra work to be the core of bridge design around which various software are uh, you know netted say for example uh, in or we use autodesk inventor for customizing bridge parts like abutments bridge deck and so on we will ready for the alignments and profiles and so on right so right within the uh, infra work module you will be able to uh you know ready the model for structural analysis as well uh for fem based analysis you have something called as autodesk structural bridge design it prepares your model readily to be brought into structural design modules um known as structural bridge design and it you can visually look, i mean uh, numerically and visually take care of the design once the model has been brought in it's a simple matter of running analysis on top of it so whether it's visual or numerical you can see the results for yourself on autodesk structural bridge design right so this is the connection so you see the connection happening in bim you develop a 3d model you're pushing into another model i'm not wasting any time you know in uh, pu- uh, exchanging data between various software okay then you can get into optimization of gerd uh, gerders here using uh, structural bridge design and so on so this is a typical workflow of bridges uh, when it comes to uh, autodesk solutions so please have uh, an idea of what this is about so infra works will still be at the helm of bridge design supported by various other products right so coming to one of the last parts i hope i'm on time 10 okay so coming to the last part of it which is virtual design and construction um so I talked about 4d 5d simulations and like uh, you know um, now we consider as once you develop your 3d model in civil 3d it was always 5d was always taken care of right cost was always taken care of because it's a by product of your 3d model but 4d was largely remaining and we have software such as navis works to develop you know timeline simulations or for that matter clash detection and as i told you earlier you know a road model is uh actually a multidisciplinary model it contains utilities it contains roads it contains structures so we should see a clash free model before it even gets to site because changes at site can be very expensive so navis works is one tool that allows you to <clears throat> make the design changes even before it reaches the site so this is a great deal for all the contractors and most of the contractors do design coordination even before the, they jump on to construction right and also timelining right with by using navis works or a combination of other pro, um, various other products in uh, <clears throat> in the autodesk portfolio you can see the project timeline as it is because bim model it understands every aspect of your bim model whether it is your, your bc dbm w wmm or gsp or subgrade it can simulate the construction of each and every layer in a timeline manner based on the gantt chart that you prepared whether it's in whether you want to link it to primavera ms project yeah, you can link your design model to anything and then see the timelining of the same so coming to collaboration and coordination like so was saying you need a single platform or a virtual platform on which everybody all the stakeholders of the project need to work so this definitely is one of the best thing that you um, you know uh, the lines that you have said so yes we need to establish our design models whether it is roads highways or bridges 
on a common data environment or a, uh, you can consider this as your shared drive on the cloud shared drive on the cloud where anybody can access any file at any given point of time access your files anytime anywhere whether it's the owners whether it's the designers whether it's the engineers or whether it's the contractors should they should be able to access and mention the changes required right on a central model right so this is possible when you establish your design uh, or you know store your designs on a uh, common data environment platform such as autodesk doc and you can collaborate with various team members whether it's surveyors whether it's designers whether it's doctors or structural engineers or bridge engineers you can work out of the same model uh, at the same time and uh, there's also one other thing that i was saying was permissions right you don't need to uh, give uh, permissions to everybody in the project you can control the access of control i mean access uh, i mean you can control the uh, access to the files based on the profile of that person right all of this can happen using autodesk bim collaborate pro the three main takeaways from bim collaborate pro would be better collaboration better communication in the project and of course better project collaboration if you if you can see the collaboration uh, i mean civil 3d collaboration on its own as this this will be the typical interface it will be just like accessing your you know any cloud storage um, system whether it's google drive one box whatever so the only change is this has been made with design data in mind this has been made with the various personas inside uh, in the ac industry in mind right so you can collaborate you can coordinate based on a central design file so uh, if a project manager wants to see the changes occurring in the pro uh, project you know, say whether it's version 1 to version 2 he wants to see the difference of what design changes have been made he can instantly go into the cloud platform and have a look at what changes have been made right so uh, see if you see this the swipe that you see there the design changes can be seen instantly whether it's option 1 or option 2 you can change or revert to where what whichever version you want uh, on the go as well that is the beauty of it and if there's any particular comment that a project manager or you know higher up wants to make on a particular project he doesn't even need to open the project uh, i mean the software he just needs to go and log into this bim project to collaborate pro mark the changes send it to the designer he can assign that changes to a specific person and he gets a notification saying that this person has requested for this change how are you doing it there's an issue in this design have you resolved this issue all of this can happen and on the cloud itself you can have a lot of uh, you know model coordinations as well on the go this is particularly important for bim coordinators they can bring all the models together with electrical whether it's uh, structural whether it's um, you know in a linear design you can bring it and have a look at this last but not the least we also need to understand how this connected bim work uh, workflows work and what software would be required during the course of the project right as i told you you need to establish the entire project on bim collaborate pro which form, forms the foundation okay and then from the survey onwards you use survey to planning and concept design you use infrawork a combination of re recap as well as you saw for lidar data you use civil 3d for documentation 3ds max for visualization if you are bidding for projects definitely that will be helpful during detailed design of course the hero products come into picture the hero products are civil 3d for road design revit for you know detailing out your structural design such as uh, you know bridges tunnels culverts and so on dynamo for placing um, you know uh, city furniture automating city furniture on your uh, uh, you know device i uh, sorry on your model and autodesk vehicle tracking to do design validation swept path analysis i'm sure you would have heard about auto turn auto track things like that is called uh, swept path analysis and then coming to virtual design you only need two aspects if you are monitoring progress of a project you need the capro to superimpose it on your design model to see the progress or you need navisworks to develop time planning uh, for your uh, project as well so that can happen i hope that is clear
So some of the customer stories, I, do, I really don't want you to get into the details of the customer stories or who the customer is, but I just wanted to, I want to draw your attention to the, the last part of the, I mean, the, the text that has been written at the bottom of this uh, slide. Improved existing condition capture of tunnels. Okay, improved quality and efficiency. So these are some of the takeaways that customers look uh, or want in their day-to-day -day life. Improved project coordination and construction planning. How great it is if a customer is saying this, all of this, if he has uh, you know, inculcated BIM workflows in their day-to-day -day design. And also there's another thing, uh, if you see, just see the bottom of it, and uh, so have a look at the video that's staying at the top. They say 33% reduction in design time and cost. That is phenomenal in, a, in an industry which has got one of the least profitable margin, profit margins uh, in the world. If they save 33% reduction in design time. That means 30% more can be used for other projects. Sustainable design helps in saving time and money. That's a great deal. And cloud-based models help avoid construction issues. Everything translates to cost saving or improved profitability. So connected design can lead you to all of this. And of course, the third one would be Clark County Washington uh, PWD, where you, if you see, quick redesign of interchange with 3D modeling, minimize conflicts and improve quality with cross-discipline design, so on and so forth, right? And improved construction plan. These are all benefits that offer. And of course, this was one of the, one of the very first projects we saw entirely done on uh, BIM, right from concept to commissioning, right, the, by WSP. So obviously improved early stage alternatives, help speed approvals, See, this is key for any um, you know design and engine, uh, design engineering firm, right? And improved construction simulation um, with respect to 4D, 5D, right? All of this are some of the advantages. So now with that, I come to the end of my presentation. I am open to taking questions now. Um, we have about five minutes before I take questions. I hope I clearly explained the connected nature of them in today's date and where what people are using in today's state for design and development so yeah with that i also want to yeah i also want to leave you with the word thing that the operation maintenance piece which both talked about will be an area to look out for stay tuned for more uh, from autodesk and cape record on uh, operation and maintenance piece we'll come back to you with a, another presentation on that Yeah. Thank you, Ramesh. There, uh, thank you, Vivek. There are a lot of uh, questions. So, yeah. in the interest of time, I'll try and see. I think some of the questions you have already answered during your presentation. Okay. So, I'll just quickly probably skip some of them. But still, like Abhishek asked, what is the scope of BIM and road and highway? I think that's been covered up. Yeah. How is the construction documentation handled in BIM environment? Do you want to elaborate? I think you yeah. can cover that. Yeah, already. I did elaborate. Yeah, uh, construction so document. I asked for this. Then Pavan has asked how the typological, how, how the topography survey carried out for aerial or physical and how this uh, collective data implemented in BIM. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Khandilwal, I'll also request you to, from your experience of the actual execution of the project, if you would like to address some of these questions, please feel free to uh, add from your own experience onto this. So do you want to take this question, uh, Vivek? Yeah, sure. I can take this up. I can take this up. So let me um, take it one by one. Let's make it quick. I believe there are about ah. seven questions. I should yeah. still be able so, to cover that. So we will maybe just... Uh, oh, okay. Just construction. So just I'll start from uh, the person with my name itself. Vivek Pimple has asked me Okay. how the construction document handles in BIM environment. See, uh, Vivek, as I told you, um, construction documents are byproduct of the 3D model, which reside on a BIM environment. So it handles perfectly all right. There's no limitation to the kind number of documents you want, which are generated from the 3D model, which resides in the common data environment or the cloud environment, right? So uh, whether it is your plan, uh, you know, uh, plan profile sheets or cross section sheets, uh, plan, that is plan production sheets basically, all of them can be auto, um, automatically developed, generated and stored in the uh, BIM environment. Second thing is how the topography survey from Pavan, 
is how topography survey is carried out for aerial or physical, how this collective data is implemented in them. See, Pawan, as I told you in my presentation itself, the topographic survey, if you, you want a typical uh, total station survey, DGPS survey, it can be carried out by uh, various machineries, and there are automated methods inside of Civil 3D to automate point, uh, the import of points and feature lines that you've carried out, you know, say road edges, building edges, all of this line work can be automated in Civil 3D if you develop a specific code for that. And aerially or physically, it depends. I mean, whether you're using your uh, device to survey aerial uh, imagery or, you know, LiDAR information depends on what level of accuracy you need for your survey data. You can capture them using a drone, for example, and then this can be brought into software such as Recap, which reduces the LiDAR information or photogrammetric information into by, into by one twentieth of the size. And then you can push it into design models such as introvert. That is how the process is, actually. So that is the first step in BIM, in fact. Okay, and then uh, I think the second one would be. Uh, we move to next question. If you can just stop sharing your screen, probably, and maybe yeah. switch on your camera, it will make it more. Oh, 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 sorry, yeah. sorry, <laughs> I didn't realize. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I can take the questions. Okay, just a minute. Just a minute, please. I'm just overrunning my. The other meeting, I'm just okay. So, okay, then uh, I'll just choose some of the questions that we can uh, take up here. Uh, how can an architecture student move to move forward in the design part of the roads and highways using the environment? Well, the first step should be infra work through. Okay. Uh, so, Gaurav also asked India, India upcoming 2022 BIM highway project, which ones? Well, I'll have to find out about that. At the immediate outset, I don't have any information on that. Gaurav, we can reach, uh, reach so out to you. There are a lot of government website where they can... Yeah, they can stuff. find the information. Yes, yes. National Infrastructure, uh, you know, NIP uh, also gives you a lot of information. Uh, uh, and uh, NIP, there's a website for NIP that gives you an information. Probably Kandilwal sir can also provide some options if he has. And then uh, Vinay, Vinayak also asked, how do you compare Autodesk BIM with Bentley's open roads? Why should I prefer Civil 3D over open roads as a startup? Well, see, I've, every software has its own pluses and minuses. Our major advantage is in the modeling space, right? BIM, as I told you, at the crux of BIM is are the 3D models and also the interconnectivity it holds with the other software. From a BIM workflow standpoint, definitely is one of the reasons why you should consider Civil 3D. And of course, Civil 3D, itself being a connected BIM kind of a uh, platform, right from the get-go, it should make things simpler for you. Uh, to what percentages are quantities derived from models and reliable accurate? Anup, all of the design and uh, you know, derived, uh, 3D model design, uh, uh, derived derivatives, uh, as I would want to call it, are 100% accurate. Whatever you design, what you see is what you get. Right, so there's no change in that. So, what software is used for tunneling? Uh, can... Here, I would like to add that uh, since earlier, uh, some of the designs might not have been updated or integrated, like uh, some changes have taken place in plan and profile, structures might not have been done, or earthwork calculations have been done earlier, and uh, re evaluation might not have been done. But now, since it is uh, well connected. So any moment you can get updated quantities with respect to latest uh, highway features, structure features, or uh, any pro slope protection measures or landslide measures. So everything gets updated and uh, the quantities can be anytime updated and compared with what is the construction quantities going on. So client has a liberty to uh, control the budget and uh, anytime it can, uh, they can decide upon uh, with respect to their budget versus what is going on about the quantities and cost. Absolutely, sir. I mean, that's really spot on. Thanks for that. Uh, so which software is used for tunneling? Ideally, I would say a combination of introverts and private would be used for tunneling uh, projects. Because Civil 3D would always help with the alignment and profile of, for that tunnel, right? 
So Umesh is asking one more software is available by name structural bridge design, how it can be used in projects. Structural bridge design as the name suggests itself, it is primarily for bridge design, FEM analysis for bridges. That's how it can be used. So I'm just rushing through the questions. Can finished surface developed through Civil 3D be published in Revit without using BIM 360? It can also be used, uh, see, with BIM 360 or without BIM 360, it is possible to share Civil 3D surfaces into Revit. It can either go as a DWG or it can go as a solid model into uh, Revit. Uh, so Anand is asking, do we extract surface data from Introverts through RCS or Model Builder? No. See, if, uh, the data coming in from Introverts is from uh, Bing Maps, which in turn takes it uh, uh, from USGS, US Geological Survey uh, site. So how to input underground or overhead utilities in corridors input file format. So through Excel, you can do it more. He is asking underground utility. If you're talking about pipe network, Civil 3D is used for pipe network. Overhead utilities such as, you know, gantries, lampposts and so on can be placed as blocks uh, through, uh, you know, Excel file formats as well. Okay. Is there dynamic connection between Infraworks to Navisworks? Uh, Introverts to Navisworks, there is no direct connect, similar to Introverts to Navisworks. What about Introverts and uh, Introverts and Civil 3D? Introverts and Civil 3D, there is a separate tab in Civil 3D that in, imports Introverts data. There's uh, just a one-click uh, button. Mintu is asking how to open Revit file in Civil 3D as both are different file types. See, Revit files in Civil 3D, you will have to use various other formats such as, um, you know, you can bring it in, in the form of SBX, but I wouldn't suggest bringing in Revit file to Civil 3D. Rather, Civil 3D can fi file can go to Revit. Uh, it has more applications there. Which companies in India are adopting the software? There are multiple companies that are using, into, uh, uh, you know, our solutions in today's date from a BIM perspective. Uh, we have, LNT being the first and foremost, all almost all the design verticals in LNT are using it. You name Atkins, you name Arcade. So from CEG themselves are a big user of this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, and also design customization is, is allowed in the form um, allowed in the form input file like MX or GEO. I didn't get that mostly actually. I didn't get that question. So let that be design customization is allowed in the form uh, input file. Uh, well, I mean, we support XML files. We also have a util, I mean, we ha also have a plugin that brings in MX files as well into Civil 3D. It's called Genio Import Export Utility. Yeah, Genio, it's a Genio Import Export Utility. You can search it on the web. It is available as a plugin for Civil 3D. It brings in MX uh, uh, you know, strings as well. So uh, with that, I think I come to the end of the presentation. I think I'll have to jump off on to another call. I sincerely thank Kandelwal sir for the insight that is provided okay. and Chakraji for moderating okay. this. So Vivek, before we end, uh, just a uh, few more things. First of all, I like to remind all the participants that today, is an infra day for us and after this at 12 o'clock we have an event on rail at two o'clock we have on water and wastewater and at four o'clock we have solar project if any participant is interested please feel free to join for that and uh, before we end just a few more seconds i just like to run a poll so shweta if you like to run a poll we like because you know a lot of questions are coming and uh, we want all of those to be answered. So if you are interested in any questions, please answer this simple po poll that do you want us to have a more detailed presentation for your organization? If you are interested, you can just say yes. We will then connect with you and then we can have a more detailed presentation very specifically for your organization. So, uh, yes, Shweta. Uh, so quickly, if we can just say yes or not interested right now. So Shweta, let us know when it, this will be closed. I'll just close it in three seconds. Okay. I'm closing the poll now. Thank you. So we, uh, we have got your interest captured and we will contact you back. 
and if any more information is required please teacher reach out to us at connect at capricot.com and uh, with that i like to thank all the uh, participants and we consistently had more than 100 participants regularly in throughout and with that i like to also invite dr uh, mr khandelwal to say a few words about the overall presentations so vivek if you are running out of time <laughs> yeah i know i'll stay for this i want to hear from uh, you since uh, uh, all of us uh, time is important i can only say that frequent uh, uh, programs like this uh, should happen not only with uh, civil 3d but other uh, people also who have got different kind of uh, software on bim yes, so uh, i think cai can take lead so that everybody can understand uh, that it is a usual design process but only thing various softwares are connected through bim and uh we can uh, work on the virtual platform instead of in uh, different silos thank you thank you mr khandela and i like to thank all the participants for attending and asking so many questions we couldn't even answer all of them and we yeah. share it with vivek and we'll try and answer one on one to them through other media and before i end i just like to also mention that we are going to share the video recording of this to all the uh, people who have registered for this Uh, very soon you will receive an email on that so if you want to get into more detail i know because of interest of time we wanted to run an overview without getting into too much of detail but i'm sure as a user you you will have lot of questions which will like to answer on that so thank you everyone and thank you very uh, mr khandelwal for sharing your ideas thank you thank you and have a great day